Could you tell me what this tool is used for? I've had it for many years, and it came with a box of tools from an Ohio yard sale. It measures five inches long and stamped orange, patented August 1919 on the handle. Any ideas? It's a Uric bicycle or car tire repair tool for repairing balloon and single tube tires. Manufactured by B. Urich Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It was used to repair the outer casing of the balloon tire with rubber bands for protection against blowouts, water, and dirt entering and destroying the inner tube. Urich converted a rubber band shooter into an instrument that would insert a rubber band into a tire puncture. And then with the use of common rubber cement, the tire could be repaired while on the road. Use the repair tool with two to five rubber bands, according to puncture. Stretch rubber bands from needle to hook fairly tight. Cover bands with rubber cement and insert the tool into the puncture at once, before the cement dries. Release the bands and slowly withdraw the tool. I inherited this decorative yellow metal object, around six inches long and not heavy. The ball unscrews and there is a threaded metal spike in the cup part and what appears to be a belt loop. I was thinking of portable candlesticks, but there was no wax on it. It's unstable and would not catch wax drips. What is this thing? It's a Victorian posy holder, sometimes called a tussy mussy holder, so that a Victorian young lady could carry her flowers without soiling her shamey leather gloves. They all have that pin through to hold the bouquet firmly in place. And it was then a common practice at the beginning of a relationship for the gentleman to give the lady a tussy mussy. The term tussy mussy dates back to the reign of trendsetter Queen Victoria, who was fond of carrying these little floral bouquets wherever she went. What is this wooden Soviet measuring ruler with level? My mom gave me this, it was her grandfather's from the USSR. He was some sort of industrial metal worker. The bottom part has a ruler, but I'm not sure what the two arms are for or why there is a level or a piece that swings out. Any help is much appreciated. It's an antique mapping table, Allidade, made by a well-known instrument maker, Secretan A. Paris, in the late 1800s and early 1900s. It was used by surveyors, explorers, map makers, and the army for calculating angles and distances together with a mapping table or a tripod. What is this cross-shaped aluminum clamp marked Dunhill? It is about eight inches across, lightweight, but solid aluminum. When I think of Dunhill, I think of smoking gadgets, but I also recall them being involved in motorcycles and perhaps musical instruments. The shape is too generic to give good results on image searches. And aside from being marked Dunhill, there are no model numbers or other info. What is it? It's a Dunhill racket press, popular in the 70s. It keeps your old wooden tennis racket from warping. I had one for my racket when I was a kid. What is this old heavy metal cylinder roughly four feet tall and 2.5 feet wide found in the basement of a home built in 1910? No longer in use, but unable to remove because it won't fit through the doorway. It is metal of some kind and is very heavy. I've searched for it assuming it is some type of heating element but have not been able to find anything like it. We are going to have to cut it to remove it and would prefer to know more about it before we start cutting. Any information would be greatly appreciated. It's a gurney stove, a model widely used to heat churches in the 19th century, an early type of radiator. The design was patented by Sir Goldsworthy Gurney in 1858. It was very heavy at a time, when there was a popular belief that heat output depended on the mass of metal in the stove. By 1897, a London warming advertisement claimed over 10,000 churches, schools, government, and other public and private buildings successfully warmed by the system. This included some 22 cathedrals. Working examples can still be seen in Hereford, Chester, and Ely cathedrals, and in Tewkesbury Abbey. Don't break it up until you've investigated the resale value. I'd think someone would want it. What are these two flat pieces of metal about eight centimeters long pinned together? One piece is longer than the other and ends in a loop at a 90 degree angle. 
It was found loose in a box of old board games and has a loop at the top. You could perhaps attach it to something with like a key ring or string. Any ideas? It's a key to an antique Chinese padlock. The plate with the bent prongs goes into a slot of a padlock that pushes together a pair of leaf springs so they clear a hole inside, so the inner piece and the visible rod can slide out. I have a similar key with a lock. It came with a Chinese jewelry box. What is this rusty steel conveyor machine on wheels? Found near an old homestead foundation in Atlantic Canada. I can tell it is some sort of chain-driven conveyor, and possibly a crusher or roller. Hopefully somebody knows what this was used for and when. Thanks in advance. It's a 1930s silo filler. It was used to chop hay and fill silos with corn or grass silage. But if you ask, why did people just leave old machinery like this out in the open to degrade? Well, my grandparents had this on the family farm. They lived through the depression, so the mindset of that generation is you never throw anything away. You never know when you might need a part. What is this wood and leather object left in our house when we bought it? We're in the Philadelphia area, and it was just sitting on a shelf in the house, not near anything that seemed related. It's about 10 inches tall and weighs about a pound. My initial thoughts were that it was boat related, maybe even an oarlock from an old rowing skull but it seems like it would be too heavy for that. I couldn't find any markings to give a clue either. The band towards the bottom is leather, with possibly brass rivets. Any ideas? It's a 19th century wood pump bucket of a hand pump. This is the part that moves up and down in the shaft to create the siphon. The leather swells and seals to provide the vacuum to pump the water up. The upper end of the bucket is tapered down so as to snugly fit into the V-shaped end of the iron operating rod. A wide slot is cut right through the bucket to take the clack valve, and a hole is bored from the underside to meet this slot. I have this item that appears to be made of some plastic or epoxy resin, possible Bakelite. It weighs about a pound, it doesn't open, and the only moving part is the slider on the one side. You can see in it that it is filled with some weighed mass, so it's not meant to open up. I got it as part of a box lot in an auction, and I paid a dollar for the whole box of stuff. I'm looking forward to someone figuring it out. Please let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.